Hey guys and gals, today we have a Canyon Reels uh, GS HS 13 right there. I don't have the schematic for it, so we're gonna probably take our time a little more on this reel than we do on others. Uh, but I won't do a full breakdown either. Um, this one has an issue with the free spool. It doesn't do any free spool, as you can see. The spoon moves back and forth, but the free spool does not engage. So we're gonna open this up, taking notes along the way, and see what we can find. First thing I'm gonna start with is taking this off. Since it looks kind of like an Avid, I'm gonna assume that it kind of has the same sort of setup. So I'm gonna use my trusty old divot tool to undo this. You could use a quarter if you wanted to. That should work as well. So now I have a screw there. So let's remove that. Oh, that was pretty easy. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not pretty easy. I take that back. I'm pressing against my body to give me some leverage. And under there, there was a washer. That washer looks like it's keyed over the, the shaft. So we'll take note of that. Guessing, yep, I can just pop that out. Uh, inside here, it looks like there's a bearing. Right there, that feels okay. And we have, I think we have these two screws here that are holding this thing in place. Because this is a tension knob right here. Do I even want to do this? I don't know. Let's loosen this up and see. All right, let's take it all the way off. Yeah, I think that's what it is though. There's probably a ramp inside so it doesn't go any farther up. Maybe it screws off. Let's see. I know, I'm sorry I'm playing around with this stuff. I apologize. It's just, uh, things are interesting. Yeah, it screws off. So it looks like those two screws just kind of block it from getting too far up. Uh, I'm going to pause the camera and put this back together. I'm going to add some, clean this up and add some grease to it. Then come back to you guys. I don't want to take your time up too much. All right, so all I did there was I, I just uh, greased inside, cleaned and greased inside of it, put those screws back in, and just grease where the bearing is going to go as well. All right, so let's leave that alone and move on. Let's open these screws up here. I don't think we need to remove the handle to get this off. Uh... But if we do, that's what we'll do. I'm going to guess all these screws are going to be the same size, but we're going to make sure. Yeah, those are like the same size. Don't think there'll be any surprises there. Yeah, so they're all the same size. Pull this off. Leave this alone for now. And I guess let's go ahead and break everything down so you guys can see it. Um, there's a circlip in here holding this together, uh, kind of like the Avid. And I don't want to remove that. But in the Avid, this thing comes out. So let's see if yeah, this comes out as well. That's the ramp for the drag. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to open this up. It looks pretty standard, I think. So let's just do that. I'm moving these two screws here to get that nut off. So we'll keep those separate. And let's see what way this comes off. Okay. 
counterclockwise to remove it. And under here we have that washer, that washer, another washer, and another washer. This washer is a little bit different. This bottom one has, this lower washer has a ridged uh, bottom to it, so it, it um, cuts in. So I'm guessing that that faces down inside this bearing. Kind of like that. So we should remember that part. Let's take that bearing out. And it looks like we have something inside here also. We have a washer and a bushing that goes inside the, the pinion bearing. Alright, so let's keep those separate. And let's pop this out first. Mm, I got a bad feeling about this one. I think this bearing's shot. Yep. So it might be frozen inside there. So give me a second, I'm gonna grab a tool to pop that out. So we're going to measure it and see if we have anything like that. size. Let's find out if we have it. And we do. Let me grab that and I'll be right back. Okay. There's a replacement bearing. Uh, now, I should mention that I don't think that that's what's causing the issue with the... Um, with the lack of free spool, because that's only there, and that doesn't support the free spool mechanism. Uh, so we're gonna dig deeper, but that sucks that this is bad. Uh, I think that's all we're gonna do here. I'm not doing anything else to this. Let's check out this stack on the drive shaft, or on the main gear, excuse me. We have a double clutch. And I don't know if this is right. I'm thinking it should be this way. Then the other way. The way it was sitting was the, uh, the deeper slot was facing up. The shallower slot was facing down. Uh, I'll wait till the end of the video to tell you guys what I think it should be. I'll test it out a couple ways just to make sure that uh, it feels right. I just get the sense that it should be more like the deeper end facing down for some reason. Uh, I could be wrong, so let's hold off on that for a sec. Then we have a bearing, 
a washer and this separates by undoing that screw there is there anything else on here nope just that let's go ahead and take this apart too now that's obviously supposed to come off so let's take the screw back in <laughs> and do a little bit of pounding Okay, now let's see if we can open this up, the uh, the handle knob. I'm gonna grab a, I'm gonna grab a, a, one of these strap wrenches, and I'm just gonna wrap it around there because there's two sections. I'm gonna grip the bottom, and if it comes off, great. If it doesn't come off, we're gonna leave it alone. I think we got it. Yeah, we got it. We just want to see what's in there. That's all. This screws off. So me using a strap wrench helped uh, loosen that up. Yep, so we just got a stack. That's interesting. Just want to make sure the bottom was not turning. Now I know I'm probably breaking out a little bit more than I, uh, you may have thought initially, but just kind of look at the areas that might have issues and trying to protect them from the future or for future issues. No washers there. No washers on that screw. I don't think. No, but I don't see a washer there. Then we have one on the a bearing on the bottom as well. And I think that's it. All right, so let's check these bearings and see if they're good or not. Feels all right. Probably will be all right. And so is this one. The one that normally goes bad will be the one on the bottom, which this one obviously looks more worse for wear than this one does. Uh, but they both feel like they might be okay. All right, now let's look at this spool and see what's going on there. That bearing came out of that hole right there. I'm just gonna drop that back in. We have a pinion. That receiver there. We have the drag plate, and we have a piece that I'm guessing goes inside here. Yeah, it goes in there somehow. Like that. All right, we have a washer here, and then the drag plate. Now we have a washer that goes above this uh, spring that covers probably a bearing inside there somewhere. Let's lay these out so we know where they're going. All right, let's remove that spring. So we can get that drag out of there. I'm just pushing in and lifting up to get that retaining spring off. This should just come up and it does. That's always good. I think this is as far as we can go with this. Now I'm going to go to the other side and probably remove some screws to get that off. 
Yep, got some screws over there. Screws are obviously the same size. Let's push out gently or not. Are we missing something here? Yeah, hey, we're missing the e clip. Gotta pop that off. The way we're gonna do that is sticking the end of this uh, flat edge screwdriver in and just kind of twisting it off. I'm covering it up so it doesn't really go shooting anywhere. And that is just like an Avid. That's on there pretty tight. It's pretty ugly. Maybe I have a replacement for this that we can use. Take those pieces off one at a time. Uh, is there anything on the back side? Nope. Just this washer here, that plate. And this piece that goes inside of it. So I'm gonna lay that out kind of like this. Push, get a spring. Same kind of washer that was on top of the uh, on top of the handle. A bearing. And here's a corresponding washer on this one that goes right there. And this looks frozen. And I think that's the problem. Mm, I am pretty sure that's the problem right there. That's why this free spool is not engaging. So we'll work on getting that off. But before we do that, let's continue with this stuff so we know what the layout is. Let's pop this spring out. So we can get that drag washer out of there. And that's it for that. Uh, let's check this thing out some more. Where'd that go? I'm looking for the shaft. Yeah guys, I think this is what the problem is. The funny thing is the bearing does feel good. So the goal here is to try to keep this bearing intact and just uh, refurbish the shaft and inside that bearing. So let me see if I can get that off and then come back to you guys. I'm not done yet, but I kind of want to show you guys this stuff here. That was on there pretty bad, pretty bad. But I think we can save both things, which is good. Uh, for the bearing, I'm going to use um, this wire brush clean up the inside there. Then on this I'm going to use um, a wire brush here for the outside and I'm also going to use some 4 out steel wool to kind of brush that down smooth afterwards. All right now we have a bearing that slides on there properly. I suspect that what happened was this, this reel was left engaged uh, for a long period of time and considering how this pinion bearing looked and that right side spool bearing, there's obviously some water creeping in from that section somewhere, and just running down through the shaft and affecting these two bearings. Uh, what I'll end up doing is not greasing this one, I will oil this one because it still works, which is good. But I'm definitely going to grease the, the, the replacement pinion bearing and try to block that off or seal that area off with some grease. Alright, I want to just show you that, that you know, it all works. Uh, to clean this stuff out, I'm going to use paper towels. I will not be using anything to break down the grease because it all looks pretty straightforward. I'm just going to wipe that stuff down. Uh, use some Q-tips and toothbrush. And that's probably about it for this because this all seems pretty easy to come off. Uh, for these, I'm just going to wipe them down because I don't know the, the quality of the drags. I don't want to stick this, uh, stick some brake cleaner fluid on this and have them disintegrate because I don't have replacements for them. So we'll just kind of wipe those down and then re-grease them. 
Alright, so the first thing we're gonna do is, uh, oil these bearings. <coughs> and then we can grease those drag washers. I'm using Cal's drag grease for it. And we're just putting a light coat on here. But the truth is any excess will kind of just get squeezed out anyhow. All right, so I'm gonna start with this side where we put the, uh, the E-clip on there. I'm gonna grease these holes right here where the screw's gonna go. Grease inside there where that bearing sits. We'll wipe that part off. And while we're here, let's go ahead and grease this side as well. That looks good. All right, so the first thing we're gonna put on would be the drag washer. Just drop it in. Then we can stick that bearing inside. And now we're gonna take our plates, just kinda of lay them up to put them together. Let's go ahead and add some grease to between these two plates so they don't uh, get stuck or something to that effect. And I'm also going to grease around here so they don't get stuck inside and inside that shaft or that hole that receives the shaft. Now for this piece, I'm not gonna add any grease to it, but I'm gonna drop that. Remember the recessed or the indented side is facing down. A good way to think about it is the, the caved in part will be receiving this spring. So looking like that. Stand up like that. Now this spring will be going on top of that or this, sorry, that washer will be going on top of it. Before I do that, I'm gonna start sticking stuff on top of the shaft. So I like this. And kind of fitting them together. This piece only goes down to that notched area right there. So we're gonna push this up and just kind of get these locked in place. Just like that. And if it comes out you just do it again. Next one take the spring. Stick it in. And just make sure it's inside the groove that it should be in when you're putting it down. So we're just gonna double check it to make sure. That looks good. Now, as you can see, I used the other drag washer. They're both the same, so it doesn't matter what I did. <clears throat> but along that line, I should have used that one. So let's go ahead and stick this in. Uh, just like that. Now we can go ahead and add that E-clip. Might use a pliers to get this on, or yeah, I think I'll use the pliers. I'm just dropping it over, and then I'm gonna use my pliers to squeeze it on there. Just make sure it's level before you squeeze it on. One more double check of this to make sure that's set in place, which it looks like it is. Now we can go ahead and put this cover on there, kind of like that. I'm not screw these down all the way yet. I'm going to get all four in first. 
I'm going to go across from each other, kind of like a star pattern. That feels good. I like it. All right, so let's get this bearing inside there. Drag washer. Our clip. Our retaining ring. Now we can take where to go. There it is. This I'm gonna add some grease to this one. Uh, just because it's in that line of fire on the right side drop that down hit the spring and don't forget on this side the same as the other side the recessed inner portion will be facing up so you can receive that spring that went inside there and now let's put this stuff together uh, I cleaned this part off so I'm gonna keep that facing down uh, you may be able to end up uh, flipping this, but there's a definite feel in terms of difference from one side to the other. But it doesn't mean you couldn't flip it still. Get these set up. Drop this over before I forget it. And you know what, while I'm here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some oil along there. That's just going to kind of work its way down. As this gets used, this helps protect these things from getting, uh, from getting locked up like that bearing did. Anyhow, as I was saying, uh, set those things up. Now I'm going to add some grease to these pieces right here inside that hole where those gears go. I think that's good. Wipe that top part off because I don't want that going down. Sticking on this piece. Oh, I guess we got to pick it up. <laughs> I was trying to avoid it. It just keys in there, so you just gotta rotate it until it drops in place. Take these two pieces, drop them on there. This is a little bit tricky, because uh, we're gonna drop this on, kinda like this. Remember, it's keyed, so you gotta find that slot for it. I'm just gonna line these pieces up. And they may come out when we're putting this together, just gotta make sure that they're all lined up properly before we, um, before we put the reel, the right side of the reel on. And we're gonna leave that like that, just like that. I'm not gonna do the pinion yet. We're gonna set that to the side, and then let's do this main housing part. Some of that feels loose too. Uh, it's not though. Uh, well, slightly. Nothing terrible. Grease inside there. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is add some a little bit of grease to this click uh, click tongue here. That should be good enough. And to get this, this uh, tension knob off on the back side, you can push those two clips out. They fit inside a channel on both sides, most likely, like the Avid, I think it's Avid or Accurate, that does the same sort of thing. And I'm also gonna add some oil right here. Just kind of work that in a couple times. Let's go ahead and drop this bearing inside.
and add some oil to it. Well, let's go ahead and drop this in. Yeah, I think we're good. I think that's what the issue was. All right, so let's do the handle. Kind of get that out of the way. Add some grease to the shaft. Some on top of that hole right there. And where do we go? We'll clean this one off. This is the bottom one. Add some oil to it. Gonna drop it down. Clean these sections out in terms of the uh, <clears throat> the handle knob. Make sure the inside one is good as well, which it is. Now we're going to add some grease inside here where that first bearing is going to go or sit. And also up here where the top bearing goes. Along the way I'm greasing those threads where that uh, screw cap is going to go inside of. That should be good. Kind of drop that over it. Let's oil this one. I'm going to drop that in there and I'm going to use my tweezers if it doesn't fall on properly to get that situated over the shaft. Just kind of line it up. I'm gently pushing down here. It's not not with a lot of force. I just kind of want to get it started. And now we can just screw it in. Let's go ahead and make sure it's snug down. All right, good. Let's take our cap over it. There's no dirt inside there. It'd be nice if it had a seal right here somewhere. So let's go ahead and add some grease. Feels better. Then I screw this in just by hand.
All right, that feels good. Uh, I guess while we're here, let's go ahead and do this part as well. Clean that up. Let's take some crease inside there, and inside that hole, and some on top. All right. So I'm going to add grease to inside here where those two anthro rust clutches sit. So I'm going to fill that area with uh, with grease inside here where that bearing is going to sit, the pinion bearing. I don't want that getting frozen inside there. Uh, up here where that top bearing goes. around that post there, inside that hole. I think that should be good. All right, so let's go ahead and get the, the new pinion bearings stuck in there. Like I said, I was gonna grease it, so let's go ahead and do that first. see it's mixing with the other grease that's in there but that wasn't enough grease to begin with clean that stuff off we're just gonna drop it in kind of like that all right I thought I was recording and I wasn't uh, so we are going to just kind of <laughs> like over everything I did here uh, I, I did a lot of greasing I did a lot of narrating but obviously you guys didn't hear it because you weren't with me. Anyhow, so what I did was I secured this. I greased the main gear, secured it with the screw lightly. And when I put the handle on, I was going to tighten it down, which is what I did. Next step is to take the washer that came off, put that back on. Put the bearing that's on there. Add some oil to it, which is what I already did. And what I did discover here is that the deeper side facing up is correct. I also went ahead and cleaned inside here and greased, uh, I'm sorry, oiled each of, um, each of the other reverse clutches with a couple drops. I think I did three drops on each. I also greased inside here, which is why you see grease around these. Once that sleeve is on, take the anti reverse clutch that little indentation faces down, but if you were to get confused by it, you can certainly do it this way. Uh, put it on, hold on to the enter reverse clutch. You're gonna be cranking this way. Turn it forward, you go freely. If you go backwards, it stops, which is what happens. Next, we're gonna take this and drop it inside. I should pick it up instead, it'd be easier. Those things have to fit inside a channel, so you gotta rotate until they fit. Like that. Now we can take our bearing here, stick that in. I've already greased, I'm sorry, oiled that bearing, so I'm not gonna do it again. Put our washers on there. Don't forget this one with the indentation at the bottom, which will be facing down towards the uh, bearing, goes first. Then you have the second washer and next would be this black washer that goes all around it. Now we take this piece, it's keyed so you gotta fit it over the slot, sit it like that, then it has to meet inside that channel right there. So just on, just like that, and then we screw it in. Gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Crank it to make sure it still spins freely, which it does. Now we can secure it with these two screws. I did add grease to these holes already, but I'm gonna do it again, just in case. Okay.
focus on the rotated pinion, which obviously you can see I greased already. That end will be going in. This wider end will be going in through the pinion gear. I'm sorry, the pinion bearing. So I'm just going to drop this over it, find the slot, make sure it drops in place. Now we can take this collar or bushing, stick that inside there. Stick that washer over it. Just kind of lay it up, looking like that. Then we're just going to marry the two. If you get to here and it doesn't go on, just turn the handle a little bit because the, line, the gears aren't meeting up, that's all. And before we even close this up, we can test the free spool. And now we see that it works. So it was definitely that bearing that we saw that was frozen on there that was causing the issue. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna secure this with, this with the five screws that we have out here. All right, let's go ahead and grease this ramp here. So before we stick that back in. Those on the bottom, there's two little slots, one there and one there. We're gonna fit that over the two receiving uh, ridges inside there. So we just drop it in like this. And if it doesn't fit right away, we're gonna rotate it to where it fits. There we go. Now we're gonna take this piece, just drop it over. You're gonna take those two little tabs and fit them inside the uh, the two indentations on that ramp. And if it doesn't go in at this point, you can move this lever slightly to where it drops in place. Now we can take our bearing, stick that inside all the way down add some oil to it and now we're going to take this washer remember I said it was slotted or keyed I'm going to fit that over that shaft to get it to sit down all right so all we have left to do now is just to screw this in and put that cap on now that cap, I noticed that the uh, the O-ring that was on it was disintegrated and broke down on me. So I pulled out a Shimano TLD O-ring. It looks about the same, so it should work. Let's get this to fit over it. Yeah, that looks good. And let's go ahead and screw that in. You have to hold that silver piece when you're tightening this down. That should be good. All right, so like I said, there's a free spool. So we know everything's gonna be working or at least that part's gonna be working fine. The funny thing is, well, I don't know if it was working properly to begin with, but I never felt that this bearing was bad. But it could be because the drag was not really engaging. Obviously now it is. You can see that. Oh, it's nasty drag. All right, that's it. Uh, clicker, we, we heard that worked. Oh no, you didn't. It worked when you didn't, when the video wasn't on, so. There's the clicker working for you. And I think everything else works on the reel, so that's good. All right, guys, I know this was kind of a unbalanced kind of a video, uh, but I was obviously there's a thought process going through the stuff as I take it apart and put it back together. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I will see you all next time. Thanks again for watching.